Shalom, most high Christ bless. Officer Yosef, and we back with another Cuts from the Street right here in Richmond, Virginia. Who I got with me? Officer Yohannan. All right, we at the historic Second Street Festival right here in Jackson Forest. All right, we out here to ask the people a couple of questions. We're in front of the Hippodrome, all right, which used to be an epicenter for black excellence and entertainment, all right? So we're going to walk around, try to get the people's understanding of what the history was, and see how it correlates with the Bible. United and lies, flying the friendly skies, turning gods to Americans, fighting for a slice of this American pie, saying songs. Who, who am I with? Gary Flowers. Gary Flowers. I heard they call you the. Well, 50 Plus Magazine dubbed me the ambassador of Jackson Ward. I'm the fourth generation of my family to live here. I studied history formally at the University of Virginia and Harvard, and I give walking tours called walkingtheward.com. In fact, I'm about to give one now. All right, all right. So you're very well versed in the history of Second Street. Absolutely. All right. Jackson Ward, before Tulsa, Oklahoma, was Black Wall Street. Oh, wow. We had 600 black-owned businesses here, seven black insurance companies, five black banks in 1900. We were the birthplace of black capitalism in America. Oh, wow. So it was the white power structure that came after us to put the highway through and to break it up because we were trading with each other. Mrs. Maggie Walker, the most unheralded woman in American history, said we don't need to, 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 to go to white stores. In fact, we're going to have a black, buy black campaign in her store, the Emporium at 112 East Broad Street. The Tall Hammers family, the Schwarzschilds family, the Greenleaf family all conspired to put her out of business because they didn't want strong black men and strong black women. So her and John Mitchell boycotted the racially segregated trolley car system here. 50 years before Mrs. Rosa Parks and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did it. And they shut down the racially segregated trolley car system. Our history here in Jackson Ward is of strong black men and strong black women saying, we are not afraid of the white power structure and we will we could do for ourselves. Okay, so is it safe to say that, that the historic Jackson Ward and, and Second Street is not what it once was because people didn't want to see black exit? Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you think the solution for black people is to get back to that type of promises? Well, first of all, we gotta have a love for black people. Okay. After we love black people, we got to turn to each other, not on each other. We gotta trade with each other. Most products that we buy, we don't even know whether it's black owned or not, because we never ask. We need to seek out black owned businesses, trade with one another, and we can then reclaim part of that spirit. All right, I want to get one script in and out because I know you said you uh, you got to do an interview, but you said something that black people need to really gather together and, and fend and do for black people, right? right? The Bible is actually about that, right? You said you're familiar with this, right? All right, so read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter two and verse one. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. Because the Bible tells us to gather together, and it says we're not desired. The proof of that is, like you said, what was once a thriving black community, another race of people, came in and had to destroy it. We, the Bible also says in Proverbs 4 and 6, beyond wisdom, get understanding. You got to understand that all, all skin folk ain't kin folk. We got, some, we got a scared Negro disease here with a lot of Negroes. And... They were made compliant because if you were a strong black man or woman, you were sold down the river, like in 12 years of slave. So it's been intentional to create compliant Negroes. We got to not be afraid no more. All right. That's a powerful statement. I, I appreciate you. You All take it easy. All, All right. Y'all heard it here first. Historic Jackson Ward. Hey. Black people stop being scary Negroes. And I want to show y'all something, right? Because we grew up learning black history, right? Take a look. So we are in front of Maggie L. Walker's residence, right? Now, a lot of people are familiar with uh, Maggie L. Walker. She owns something called the Penny Bank here in Richmond, Virginia. One of the first uh, so-called black banks here in, in Virginia. What people don't know is that Maggie L. Walker is not a black person. She is not an Israelite, right? Her father was a, a so-called Edomite, and her mother was a black woman. And we're here with... Toby. Toby, Toby. So we're here at the Second Street Festival. We want to know, uh, what do you know about the Second Street, the history of the Second Street in Jackson Ward? Um, well, I, I'm originally from Indiana, but from what I understand about this area was called the Harlem of the South. Historically right. black area, black businesses, professionals, 
entertainment. Um, it was like how they're doing in the West End with the Eat Live Play. This was the original Eat Live Play concept down here in Jackson Ward. Okay, good, good. So that's exactly what it was. It's, um, also, as far as today, you know you're from Indiana, but today Jackson Ward isn't known for that. Like, no, we're, we're looking bad on the history, so wh why did it change? Um, I think it changed when we changed. And how do we change that? We moved out of these areas, and then they were kind of left to turn into what they are now and then be gentrified and then be renewed and be now be re-engaged as black areas so it's a, it's the circle of life you know like the lion king <laughs> right okay so as far as region regentrification um is that a good thing for our people because like we like you said we were thriving on our own in our own communities having our own businesses how does it look for us now with other people coming in and taking over those businesses well, if we can afford to be in those places, we are, but most of us can't afford to be in those places, so it's not necessarily benefiting us. So. Right, so you say it doesn't benefit us. So what I want to do is go into the Bible to go over some scriptures. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So like you said, um, we had our own communities who were thriving. It said the stranger shall come in and get above thee very high. So that goes into our so the business is being taken over, and now we don't own it. And now they're coming in. Keep going. And thou shalt come down very low. It says our people will be at the bottom. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So just like you said, the Bible predicted that we were going to be at the bottom of society, and everybody's going to come in and be able to thrive off of us. They're going to lend to us. We're going to have to borrow from them, but we cannot do the same to them because we don't have that power. The, can, you, can you equate that to the Bible? Can you say that it equates? Well, I think the Bible is a construct, so I don't necessarily would agree with. Okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Get um, them taste this for. All right. Uh, so, us as a people. I mean, I don't know. I just We, we were given the Bible and religion as a way to placate us, so I don't necessarily believe in the Bible per se, that we follow the dictates of it as a construct. I mean, I can believe in peanut butter and give you all the great aspects of it, but in the end, you know, what is it really doing to uplift me? Okay, understood. So, I'm not being negative against your religion, I just don't share some of the same. Sis, that's fine. We're not, you're, you're fine. You're not, it's okay. We're good. We're good. Um, so what we do teach, according to the Bible, is that the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans are the children of Israel. That God showed the people and there's curses and things in there that, that line up to who we are. Like, for example, uh, what color would Jesus Christ be? What, what color would Jesus Christ talk to you? Well, in my household, he was black. I mean, so that's, okay. you know, that was my, I didn't have any other worldview other than that. Okay. okay. So. Okay. Get that yeah. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. And that goes into watching for America or these other nations to help us out of our, out of, help us out of our condition. And we're still not right, you know, as a people, right? So, you agree with that? Get, get the last one, Zephaniah. So, what we come out here to teach is for our people to, you know, come back together, get black calling back together, you know, like the days of old. Because once we were, once we had our own things with life, we were able to do things own banks, hospitals, things of that nature, and move accordingly. But we didn't have to ask for permission or be at the bottom of other nations. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, definitely I agree with that. I mean, that's that's the whole idea of, of this country and, and colonization in general. You know, a lot of African companies now are stepping forward and saying, you know, we're no longer going to be colonized by you, but we're going to have our own honest money and, you know, our own politics and our own country. You know, we'll see how that goes. But I think, you know, worldwide, everybody should be looking at that and seeing how it applies to them. Okay, good. Last scripture. Last scripture. Okay. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. 
So God is calling for his people to gather back together, meaning the so-called blacks and Hispanics, so we can build those communities like we had of days of old. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think, I think we should be doing that on the you know, like now, building a foundation for, it might be too late for us, but for our grandkids. to the Lord that I don't relax, I was willing, I can't be that. Keep the laws and live, yeah, I believe that. There's pride in your eyes and you can't see that. 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 Repent and die, yeah, I mean that. To the Lord that I don't relapse, relapse. Those willing, I can't be that. Be that Keep the laws and live, yeah, I believe that yeah. There's pride in your eyes and you can't see that You can't see that You can't see that You can't see that Repent and die, yeah, I mean that and Who am I here with? The best and Shade. And Shade. All right, so we got a couple of questions Are you all familiar with the history of 2nd Street and Jackson Ward? Not really, not really, not really but I don't like it Say what? Not really, but I don't like it you were, you were like the Okay, so Jackson Ward historically was known as, specifically Second Street, was known as the Harlem of the South. Are you familiar? It was a thriving black community with businesses, um, banks, and uh, things that made black people to prosper. Something like, uh, uh, y'all heard of Tulsa, Oklahoma? Okay, what about, uh, what was the, the other one? Like Black Wall Street. Y'all ever heard of Black Wall Street? That was Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? So that was another thriving black community. So Second Street in the Jackson Ward area was that for Richmond. Y'all cool with that? All right, good, good, good. So a couple of questions. Do you believe today that Second Street in Jackson Ward is still a thriving black community? Yeah. yeah. Okay, why? Because we see a lot of, you know, black people around. Okay, we see a lot of black people around. What else? Everybody, a lot of people like us came out, you know, they out. Okay, so we came out to support Second Street Festival to remember it. Okay, fair enough. There's a lot of black businesses. Okay, a lot of black businesses. All right, now, this whole area used to be black businesses and black communities. Is it still the same today? Um, yeah. Yes? What'd you say? I feel like, yeah, kind of. You feel like, yeah? Oh, okay. Are you guys singing? Just a little bit. Like 50 Yeah. Okay, so before it was 100, now it's 50 50. Okay, okay, fair enough. Do you think that black people in the estate of Jackson Ward and 2nd Street are in better case today or back when it was called the Harlem of the South? Um, maybe back. Maybe back? Yeah. What about you? I feel like the same thing. Maybe back then. So it was better back then than it is today. Why? Uh, I don't know. I don't really. I feel like both. Like today and back then. Okay, you feel like both. I feel like back then it used to be more fun for them, like for everybody. Like now it's fun, but like it used to be more fun. Look up to it more back in the day. Okay, they used to look up to it more back in the day. All right, uh, so what are some things that you think may have changed between back then that made it more uh, honorable? You said people looked up to it more, and today, whereas it, it doesn't have that same uh, aura or that same prestige. Maybe because it's like more racist now like around now okay you said more racist what about you that too like i don't know i can't explain it like it's like it's us but more like different you know races and stuff yeah. Okay, so it's more diverse now. Yeah. All right, so other other races of people have come into what was a thriving black community and kind of and kind of mixed it up. Yeah. Would you say they've taken over or like get into that point? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so y'all feel like what was once a thriving community for black people is now being taken over by other races. Yeah. Okay, good. So we're getting somewhere, all right? So we're going to get a couple of scriptures. We believe in the Bible. We believe that the Bible is about black people. Do you agree? Yeah. Say yes? Yeah. Okay, what about you? Yeah. All right, so we're going to get some scriptures, right? Because the Bible tells us that this thing would exactly happen to black people, that it would a uh, once thriving community would be taken over by people that are not of the same race. Make sense? All right, we're going to get that. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 43. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So this is a book about the Israelites. At one point in time, they were ruling the world. They had everything. Kind of like how we used to have everything in Jackson Wood. But they said the stranger for breaking God's laws would get above them very high. Read and thou shalt come down very low. And you will come down very low. Read. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee, meaning at one point in time, you had the stores and the banks, and you lend to people. Now he would have those things and lend to you. 
and thou shalt not lend to him, and you will not be able to lend to him. Sound familiar? They coming in, taking over the community, and now instead of them coming to us for things, we got to go to them for things, right? The Bible said that would happen to the Israelites, right? Uh, give me, uh, so based on that, who has that happened to today? Uh, black people. Happened to black people, would you agree? Yes. So let me ask you a question. You familiar with the Bible and the Israelites? Yes. Okay, so based on that, who would the Israelites be today? Black people. What about you? That's 100% right. Black people. I'm going to show you one more, and then, Lord willing, you all, you know, do your research, right? Zeph and I, two and one. So, the spirit behind Second Street in Jackson World was uh, black people, specifically after slavery, gathering together, right, to kind of make their own way, right? The Bible says that. That's what black people or the Israelites are supposed to do. Read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. So, black people are supposed to gather together, right? Read Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. But it says, O nation not desire. Now, are black people desired as a people? Like, do people want to be around black people? Yeah. You think they do? Yeah. Okay. So, do you think black people are, like, loved and appreciated by all other races as a whole? Mm, maybe some races, not all. Not all. Like the same thing. Like some people, they like them, like other people. Okay, so some people, some people like it, some people don't. All right. So the, the Bible says, "Gather together, a nation not desire." Right. Meaning, this group of people, no matter where they would go, people would look at them as inferior. Right. So our people in China look at as inferior people. Oh no. Like, you know? Can get, get to know? Are black people in China known as inferior or equal? Right. Right. They looked at as inferior over there as well. Right? Same as over here. So the Bible tells the Israelites to gather together, O nation, not desire, because they wouldn't be desired. And one thing that will help you know that is because anytime we have something that belongs to us, other people come and take it. Right, but we don't. We don't have to. We don't have the ability to go and take a community from them. I'm Thank here you. with Reverend Osborne, Josephine Osborne. Reverend Josephine Osborne. Let me ask you this: As far as how it used to be for our people, is it like that today? Are we still in a thriving neighborhood where we can have a bank and businesses set up, or has it changed? It's changed tremendously. But what happens is that more things change, more things remain the same. So I see a little, if you can think about it as a forest, you know, when a, um, a, a fire comes by or floods or whatever, uh, it wipes out maybe the older, mature, and we miss it for a while. But then I also see little upshoots coming, and I feel like it has to be here. We have to fight for uh, this, the memory and also in respect to our elders. Um, what was very powerful here was uh, the NAACP, the Urban League, uh, many churches, um, uh, Crusades for Voters. All of this around here was very powerful when I was growing up. Okay, good. All right, we back at Second Street Festival here in the historical Jackson Ward. Cuts from the street. The real cuts from the street, right? Yes. Because yeah, right behind us, we got an Ishmaelite woman telling us how our sisters should be dressing immodestly. And the whole time she's dressed immodestly. Can't make this stuff up. So, comes from the street, live at Camp Second Street Festival. You already know. Are you out see Virginia? Make sure you subscribe. Are you out see Virginia here in the classroom? When we flip the page, swing it with that wisdom blade. Cut below us under. We build different so we don't fear the same. Get it how you want it, boy. I clean up off the bishop's plate and ain't with fellow deacons. So, my reason for. Hey, Shalom. This is Officer Yohan, and I'm here with Ease. Ease. All right. Nice to meet you, Ease. So we're going to ask a couple of questions dealing with how Jackson War used to be back in the day in its prominence and how it is today now. Uh, would you say is it, we're in a better condition today or was it better back then? It was better back then. Okay, so can you expound on how it was better back then? Jackson War was the Harlem of the South, prominent black community, um, brown people, including my family, my legacy, started here. All of my family lived on every single block throughout from Richmond from Belvedere to the Boulevard. 
and it has now been dismantled, including Navy Hill, by the Coliseum, by VCU, by Altria, by Dominion Energy, and all of the major uh, um, non-melanated people-founded corporations. Um, it is now currently being gentrified uh, heavily again, um, and everything's being erased again. And nobody is aware when they come to the city of the history and the legacy and the people, the brown people that built all of these buildings that we are surrounded by. Um, yeah. Oh, it says everything you said, true. And I love it. Hey, bro, bro, read it real quick. Get you real quick. Everything you said, we're going to equate it to what the Bible says, all right? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Just like you said, sis, we was thriving. The stranger, the other nation that don't, not melanated like us, came in and they took over. Now we're very low, right? Keep going. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. So everything you're saying was prophesied in that Bible. It's, it's coming to pass because us melanated people so-called blacks the spanish we are his chosen people they go just like you said we're not supposed to be equal but now we're at the bottom instead of being on top thriving uh give me that flat two and one so what do you think we need to do to come back to being a thriving nation not having to depend on other people well colonize colonization occurred here in virginia this is a virgin state of this nation everything started right here where we are and outside of us being shipped over here we were also shipped from here over to the other uh, nations and other continents. Um, we are the original people of this of this place, of this land. Um, that not only includes African, indigenous, but I'm talking about indigenous American who were brown people. Uh, and yeah, 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 I ain't gonna No, you good, sis, you good. I'm gonna read one more scripture for you. And it's to go to what you were saying, what we need to do to come back to this. Decolonize. Decolonize. I like that. Decolonize. Then you go. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. So God is saying the same thing. Us as a people have to come back to dealing with each other. Good is about it. We've learned how to live as they do. Exactly. And we've forgotten how we, are, how we were raised, born and raised to be in harmony and love and peace. And now it's just a competition, it's hate amongst one another and we need to turn that energy to the people who have oppressed us. There, yeah. there you go. One more. You gotta get it. Uh, give me Proverbs 3, 31. Like you said, the people that oppress us and you said we went away from our way. Now we're doing what everybody else does. Right? And that's the problem. We gotta come back to what we're doing. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. But just like you said, sis, stop doing what the other people are doing, the ones that enslaved us and oppressed us, stop doing that and come back to what we used to do, come back to our heritage, right? You agree with that? I, 100%. All right. All right, so we're wrapping up Cuts from the Street live here in Richmond, Virginia at the historic Second Street Festival in downtown Jackson Ward. Uh, we gauged the people. A lot of them had a lot of understanding about the history of Jackson Ward and, and uh, Second Street, and uh, a lot of them had some very good insight as to the solutions, which are biblically sound, to help our people get out of the estate that we're currently in. You got anything? Uh, yeah, also, just learning learning more history about being out here, talking to people, learning that this place right here had over 600 businesses owned by black people, and it was a thriving community. But not just on this street alone, but all across Richmond, pretty much. A, lot, a nice chunk of the Richmond that our people own, and we thrive. So knowing that we don't have it now is saddening, but I'm glad we get to get this information out to the people so they can learn about their history. All right, so make sure you subscribe to IUIC Virginia, IUIC Virginia in the classroom. All right, shalom, most high Christ best. That's been another cut. Gotta be top of the list. Gotta be one of the 144,000. I've been gone for a while, yeah. Back and forth in my mind, yeah. Back and forth, I go back and forth. I've been back and forth all the time, yeah. Lord knows I be wildin'. Lord, tell me where my trials, yeah. Been in denial, yeah. Oh.